Well, welcome Dathil Evans to Screen Careers today. Thank you for spending time with us. Now, your current role is uh, that of a line producer as well as a production manager on different film productions. Could you explain to us what those responsibilities are within both those roles? Because they are, can be quite different. Okay, uh, so it's wide ranging. Um, it's about crewing, um, it's about health and safety, it's about checking risk assessments, it's about making sure that um, sets are built properly, it's about find, um, checking out locations are fine, it's, it's everything, it touches on everybody else's department and um, you, your, your key to making sure that all their different departments are happening and working and doing what they need to do. And um, in, in regards of um, what would be really interesting to hear is how Raphael Evans left school <coughs> and has moved towards production management and line producing. What steps and what career pathways did you choose within production to get you to these um, higher roles? So I left school and I went to university um, and I did a history degree. So nothing resembling the career path that I eventually chose. Um, I was lucky enough to spot an advert in a newspaper. That's how long ago I started. Um, and they were advertising for um, an office secretary stroke admin role. Um, and I applied and I got the job which was basically um, answering the phone, opening the mail, making teas and coffees, you know, very junior role. Um, but it gave you this chance to see an overview of what people did, what their job role descriptions were. It was a busy production company who um, were involved in various genres. So you had drama, documentary, um, light end. So you get a chance then because you're the lowest of the low to try and help out on different programs, different setups and see what you like and what you didn't like. Um, I then got promoted as a drama coordinator and I loved it. I love working in drama. I love the fact that you have a script and you have a schedule that reflects what's in the script and off you go. Um, and I never looked back really. Um, so I did a few series for S will see with um, the production company, uh, Old Place Television, as they were then. As and a then, coordinator, do I feel? As a, yeah, yeah, as a coordinator. Um, and then I got a phone call from BBC Wales and they were looking for um, a coordinator in their drama department. Um, and they were very busy at the time. So it was a good opportunity for me. So I said, yes, please. And I interviewed and they gave me the job. And I started there about 2000. Um, and I just worked, I was very lucky because they had network programs that they were doing for BBC One. They were also doing stuff for BBC One Wales. So you get a chance to, it's not too big, it's manageable. And they invested in me and um, I stayed there for about four or five years doing various programs. Um, and then I got a call from BBC Drama and I went to work in Casualty. So that was network, high volume, totally different ball game um, to what I was used to, but it was the next, still the same role, but lots of different challenges because mm -hmm. I just done one-offs or little drama series, six part, eight parts. And this was obviously 50 odd episodes going most of the year, you know, filming. I arrived in the middle of summer and they were filming their Christmas episode. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a big, it was a big change, but it was good and it was lovely to work on a series that had been going for donkey's years yeah. and a great opportunity. So I did a couple of years there um, and then it was the time that Doctor Who was restarting, um, funnily enough, for BBC Wales. So I went back there to do a bit of a stint there, setting that one up. Um, and then an old producer friend of mine, <clears throat> who I bumped into in the canteen at BBC Wales, he said, when are we going to work together again? And he had a drama series that he was setting up that had been commissioned, brand new series. 
and he said, I'm looking for a PM, would you be interested? Wow. And I just thought by then, I built up a lot of different projects, lots of different people to work with, and I felt that I was ready to move up. I'd learned a lot from the line producers and PMs that I'd worked with over the years. Mm -hmm. And I thought, right, I, I know this producer, I know he'll look after me. Yeah. I feel confident. And if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter because he knows, he yeah. knows he can, I can, you know, he, he'll make sure that I, I go the right way. Yeah. And um, so I took the jump um, and I was a bit nervous, but we did it. We did two series of a brand new program. So setting it up from scratch with a bit of help um, and did that. And then that's what I've been doing now for the past, I think it's about 16 years. Wow. And then gradually, wow. <laughs> the best. That's amazing. Um, and then <laughs> gradually as time has gone on, I've PM'd a lot of different programs, not just drama, I've done Obstock, Factual, Entertainment. I always like to go back to drama. Um, and now I've just started doing a bit of line producing, um, which I hope I can continue to do. I'm still learning, you know, you get a really good line producer and you think, oh my God, I want to aspire to that. So it was when, same as when I was a coordinator, and you have a good associate producer, they used to call them in BBC, or a good PM and you think, I want to be that. And I'm lucky enough to have worked with some really good line producers and I'm thinking, I aspire to be that. You know, even though I've been doing this for 25 odd years, I'm still learning stuff and I still want to be the best that I can. That's great advice there, Daphne. And along the way, you must have gathered quite a considerable amount of skill set and skills and, mm. and, and things that you've had to learn along the way. And, and for our audience today, um, in regards, uh, re really interesting enough, you've, you've mentioned the interviews that you've attended. I'm just looking for some best tips and advices for somebody who's starting out in the industry or trying to start out in the industry that might have to go to their first interview, which is a nervous moment, whatever interview is held. But in film and television, it's, it's, it can be in a slightly different world to another world in regards of, of interview techniques. Do you think there's anything that you could partake with your wisdom now of being through those moments that you could then um, possibly let us know uh, some tips and advice today yeah you're right television interviews are slightly very different to what we have to do in the normal world you know you don't often have to send a covering letter and cv somebody or hopefully somebody will phone you on your phone and they'll offer you a job or you you know you'll have an interview or meet them and see if you get on with them um so it's about being personable I think it's about being keen. It's about being involved. I love my job. I, I think it's exciting. So if you need to, you know, channel that excitement and keenness and um, just hope that the person who's interviewing you likes you, it's more of a personality thing. They hopefully they think I can do the job because they've got a copy of my CV. But it's whether or not it's, Working in telly is such teamwork. It all, everybody needs to, it's so many different parts of the wheel, of the cog to make the wheel go properly. Um, so that it, it's, it's, it's finding that relationship with people um, wow. and being, being, being honest with them about what you can and what you can't do. I think one of the reasons I started as a, just, you know, just an office person, was I could type, I could do Excel, I could do Word. Then I'm quite good at computers and I learnt movie magic, scheduling, first of all, when it was still in its fairly in its infancy. It didn't look like anything you'd ever seen before. Mm. But it, I was lucky because I was working for a company. So if there was downtime, you could sit at a computer and fiddle and have a play and learn that way. Yeah. So you, the pressure wasn't on, I've got to get a schedule out. You could just have a little play, see what you can do. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter because it's just learning. It's just the computer in, on the corner. Um, and then obviously you pick up different things. Now learned Final Draft, which nobody was using. When I started, they were still typing. Sometimes people wouldn't even type their script. They'd give it to you to type. Yeah. So Final yes. Draft is very much an editorial thing and, and for the writer to, to effectively um, yeah. draft their, their, their work into 
for production to use. And just picking up on that as well, because the attribute of, of and the cleverness of final draft, should it be written correctly by a writer, is that mm -hmm. one can export that information, the script information, into your movie magic schedule, if I remember correctly, from past days myself. Um, and potentially you can export the schedule into the movie magic budget as well, can't you, in, in some elements? Yes, yes, you can. Um, it doesn't always import properly. Mm -hmm. And if the, your writer hasn't written his script properly, then it won't import. Yeah. But also, I think, yes, it can help you when you import, but there's nothing better when you're scheduling than sitting there with your script and going through it line by line. So you can just in case somebody, we're only human beings, we forget things. If you've got it there and you can see it in front of you, that's your job if you're inputting to Movie Magic, is to make sure it's all correct. Have somebody check it, but it's your responsibility. I mean, it's brilliant because that's how you get to know your script. That's, that's key, that's what you know, and you know then, as you go along, you start typing scene one, and it takes longer to put it all in, but by the time you get to scene eight, 10, 12, you think, oh gosh, this is a recurring theme here. I didn't realize it when I read it in scene one, but I realize it now that I've come to scene 10. Mm. So it's all about breaking your script down, which is key. I think everybody who works on a drama has to read the script. And this software is trading enough to set a monopoly on the industry as well. So if we're signposting mm. people to learn um, and mm. to um, invest, possibly, because one has to invest in this software at some point, but yeah. when they do invest in the software and use the software, it is a 100% industry used piece of software, yeah. isn't it? Um, oh, so yeah. you're kind of investing in a correct manner um, of your time and, and, and skill um, based really in regards of yeah. learning these, these, um, this, these software packages eventually. Um, yeah. Dathil, I can't thank you enough. I know you're a busy lady and you're in the middle of setting up a production as, at the moment as a production manager. Um, so I would love to just ask you our final question today and that is what have been your career highlight and do you have any future goals? Apart from working with you? <laughs> <laughs> I think... Long time ago. <laughs> I think it was probably getting the opportunity to go and work on Casualty. Um, it was a big step for me at the time. It was going to do something that was network, that had a big audience, and there's nothing better that gives you a little fleece on than thinking, I'm working on something that hundreds of people if not thousands of people are going to watch so there's something quite nice about being involved in that um and then obviously my first job as pm would is always a highlight because it, it's i was given the massive opportunity that i really wanted to do um going forward I think I'd like to just move into live producing and being that wise old owl who knows everything. Um, <laughs> or not, or, may, or, or can make the final decisions, even if they're not always the right ones. I'd like to be that wise old owl who sits in the tree, who everybody comes to ask questions. That's it. Having been based in Wales with you along the way and along the years and knowing what you can do, you are very much the wise owl and you will be one heck of a line producer as well moving forward. I already that you are doing it already, um, but um, it, it would be um, wonderful if, uh, if I could work on any of your shows. Um, Dathil, I would like to say thank you from Screen Careers today for spending time with us from your very busy production period at the moment setting up, and um, we really very much appreciate that. So, diolch yn fawr, Dathil. Ah, Chrysler. Pleasure.